All right, now um, I'm, I'm about to invite the speaker for tonight. And just before he comes, we are going to stand up and give a big shout. But let me first introduce him because I'll just go off. After this. So the speaker for tonight is Dr. Jobrach Saku. I am Dr. Jobrach Saku. You know, I have to address him as Dr. Jobra because the man he read the books. It's not these people who get uh, degrees on the street. You finish in here for one, someone comes around and says, You're a doctor. No, 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 no. He read his books. So he is the CEO, founder of a company called Chisaka. They are auditors and accountants. And, and his business is very big. No, his company is very big, but also he has other businesses. He's employing so very many people. He's the husband to Harriet Chisaku, who is a director up here in Africa Renewal Ministries. And he's very inspiring. And he's one of our elders here at Gaba Community Church. So I would like us to, uh, to give a big shout to Jesus as he comes to the platform. A big shout to Jesus! Now, the shout is to Jesus, not to him. So let's give a, G a shout to Jesus. And a welcome to him. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wow. I'm so pleased and honored to, to be your guest speaker today. Uh, I started on Sunday. And we are so happy uh, that Pastor, you thought of such a session, a seminar. One thing I learned is to honor our own pastors and our own people. I'm always inspired by the humility of our pastor as well. Plus all the pastors in this place. Can we give all of them a hand clap? I thought accounting was hard, but pastoring is hard. Pastoring people, you know, Moses said, am I the one who gave birth to these people? He was tired. But we thank God for your humility, Musumba. And all your fellow ministers, their wife. May God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. I also want to honor those who have spoken before in, during this week. Uh, Madam Jennifer, I missed you narrowly because I got interrupted, but I heard everything that you preached. Madam Jennifer, praise the living God. Father, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for choosing me to be your vessel. These people have not come to listen to me. They have come to listen to you through me. Therefore, I humble myself before your throne. Use us as worthy vessels, O Lord. And may your people be transformed from one level to another. And I decree that we shall never, never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Praise the living God. Those are my names. Um, ha. I'll tell you little about my history. So long. I am what I am because of God. 
Um, I'm uh, one of the 30 children of my dad. And I'm the first, I was the first to be born again in the family. Hallelujah. Amen. But I thank God that now we have uh, about three, four pastors in the family. The first pastor, I had to lock him in the room and tell him only one scripture that I knew. And oh. I didn't open the door until he had confessed. Romans chapter 10, you must confess with your mouth. Confess, I'm not opening the door. We were strange Catholics. My dad told me, if you are not uh, letting go of that faith of yours, I'm not giving you school fees. Amen. Amen. And I told him, it's okay, my God shall provide. Um, so, I reached King's College Budo. In S1. And I reached one month late. When, when people had already started. School. Halfway, the secretary, when she read the list of what I had brought. No, the items, they have a school list, but she was ticking whatever, yes. asking what item have I brought. She, lived, she reached halfway and I didn't have any of the things. Even the school uniform I didn't have. So she told my dad, can you pack up your child and go back? The lie that my dad created, I have never forgotten. And she said, the, we come by boat. The boats have gone. So somehow, the secretary let me in the school. So you can imagine that almost all through my education, I was always being sent home. So in HSC, I'll cut that one short. When I reached HSC, some of the things we did were embarrassing. So we are not here because we are the best, by the way. But I'm telling you all this to show you God's grace. That any one of you can do it. So I failed to get the fees. So I went to NRM Secretariat. They had uh, a scheme of paying for orphans and uh, people who had been in Luero like that. And I said, so when I reached, I was taking the form and I reached somewhere, you had to prove that your wealth had been taken by the army or your dad was dead. So I went to my dad. I told him, my friend, you have to die now. <laughs> he said, only that? I'm dead now. So that's how I started Elevo. Government, Hallelujah. All of you have stories. But I have stories. But God is so good. So thank God I reached campus and did Bachelor of Commerce. And uh, uh, 
I went to work, I started with PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, I went through a number of companies until I, I think the last one was finance manager of Total Uganda Limited. So there I refused to do, to do two crazy entries. Um, it was a big story, but because of confidentiality, I was laid off. And one of them was a serious URA entry which I refused to do. Another one was about staff. Uh, benefits which I gave them without the approval of the organization. And they were so, annoyed. so out of that, uh, I started Chisaka and Company Certified Public Account. God takes accountants. us through all those experiences because He has a good plan for us. Anyway. Uh, Chisaka and Company, because of we do accounting and auditing, we do investigations. By virtue of my profession and work, I have seen that in organizations. But I know that whatever I do, I've been called by God, so I'm the light wherever I go. I would have had a good house, I think, two years, uh, because I presented an investigation report of one of the national organizations. And the man asked me, young man, do you have a house? And sure, I didn't have. There are times when you face real Whoa, I think that is the word the madam talked about. Temptation. So many examples, by the way, which we have found, but our country is rotten because of corruption. Corruption, corruption, corruption. So uh, our farm has uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 as its key scripture. That we are the light of the world. So whatever we do, we base on that scripture. And many of you, some of you, excluding pastor, have come and shared in our fellowships. Um, so we train, one of our callings is to train graduates without experience. We don't need an experience. How many of you are working with us? I think they are not here. They are busy working. But some of them have seen them around before. So we train them and to transform them into better people. So we have uh, we have uh, built, um, I don't know if you have that picture, we have managed out of the hard God's grace to construct uh, our offices on Buganda Road in the capital city of Uganda. Hallelujah. Amen. Not because we have a lot of money. And those are the principles I want to tell you. It is not about how much money you have. But it is how you use the little that God has given you. So we have also, uh, we have another organization called Chisaka and Associates. We do uh, consultancy work under that one. Uh, we also have Chimujo Holdings. Which owns uh, some of the properties that we have. Because of tax reducing taxes, you have, uh, you see, you have to put your business and a company. 
Okusobola okukendeze nyoku misolo no kuteka business yo once we chitongole. We do taxation so we know what happens. How where do you pay less? As an individual, you are very small, but as a company, you sound like you are very big. Then we also have uh, uh, Christian resuscitation ministries. Uh, we help I and my family and my wife. We, we started that organization. We fund rural churches, we try to help them from uh, poverty. Let me tu, call it that. Through what God has blessed us, we, we choose, we have so far helped five churches. We either build a foundation, a roof, something that we can afford. Then we give uh, Christians within those small churches uh, micro loans, small loans, so that they can help themselves. Hallelujah. So that is the little uh, I can tell you about myself. I serve on a number of boards. Um, I remember when arms was starting, I came, oh, I think it was for free, and set up their systems. And, and that is my passion. I've been asking Christians, we want excellence. Can we do your work at almost for free, but because God has given us the skill and you don't have the money, we can help you, God will pay us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, let's begin. Um, we have had so many, we have a lot of information. But our first session, I'll go through uh, income enhancement, which the pastor Mose talked about. Just to expand a bit on what he said. So, uh, he talked of net worth as the difference between your net total assets and total liabilities. But the assets come out of the revenue and expenditure that you incur uh, now and then. So quickly, how do you enhance this income? How do you increase your income? So the first source of income are uh, the natural sources which God created. So the first one is labor, yourself. Through your skills, through the salaries or employment uh, or wisdom that you God gave you. So you are the first natural resource. Because and you cannot avoid it. You have, somehow, you, you, you must accept to be a, a servant if you want to be great. Isn't that what we say? You must be under Pastor Peter before you say, I'm also my own pastor. So, employment is not bad. But as long as you have a mission and a purpose and a target. Then the second one is land. If you have land, you can do agriculture and so on and so forth. The sea, the air, the minerals, and maybe if, in case you are well off, in case you inherited something. So supposing, let's go to an example of salaries. How would you allocate? I want just to take you through a very small illustration. How would you allocate the small salary that you get? I'm assuming that you get one million per month. 
Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, I'll assume that the first 10% is the tithe. That is, uh, no, there's another one. Then um, the one before. Income allocation. Did I miss it? Okay. Supposing you have one million, uh, million ten percent is a tithe. Then let's say this next ten percent is forgiving for people because you must be a giver. That is a hundred thousand. Then the next ten percent is a tithe. Then you must have in your pocket some what we call precautionary money. Yes, because incidents may happen which are unannounced. You must have some money around. Let's say give it 100,000. Then let's put personal expenditure at uh, say 40 to 50 percent, that is 500,000. So you must, one thing which is like a tithe is saving, you must save no matter how little you are getting. Because you will not, where will you get investment if you have not saved? I think the slide got lost, so... Uh, I assume that 20% will be savings, so that is 200,000. So if, if you have 200,000 times 12 months, I will assume that you must accept to suffer or to sacrifice for three years, three to five years, saving something. So you'll have a minimum of 10 million. So let's move to the next one which you had brought. So supposing you have, because by the way, when I started working, I was saving 50%. Don't tell me about other expenditure. The moment I get my salary, 50% would go to another account. I had learned that without saving, you don't go anywhere. So I bought a taxi. Unfortunately, my brother crushed it. Let's, let's move on to the next slide, Next slide. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. So you can invest in a number of things like this. If we say maybe you buy a plot of land or, and somewhere of 10 million, I'm assuming that it will appreciate at 10% per year. After five years, you'll have, it will be worth 15 million. So you'll have a profit uh, of maybe five million. So I'll take you through the middle column, what we call financial instrument. So financial instruments are um, things like we have public financial instruments which are like shares. We also have uh, uh, financial instruments which are sold by banks. Uh, I don't know how to call them, but you go and invest your money. They sell you a paper, say like a contract, and say, you have given us 10 million, we shall give you interest at uh, 12%. These days, uh, if it is a commercial bank, they will give you a low interest, 6%. So don't go to those banks. So uh, MDIs, we have what we call micro deposit institutions. And that's where I invest. Their, uh, their average interest is about 12%. 
So I assumed 10 to 11. And some of the instruments include uh, fixed deposits. Uh, the others are complicated. So 10 million at 11%, that 11, after five years, you'll have 17.3 million minus 10. You have a profit of 7.3 million. So, katumia miaka etan, boba wateka yo a million is okumi. Katufu na ibi tundu tundu kumi na chimo ibi ama goba budi muak. O miaka etan o jiguela kujia kwa ifuni de million zonga musanvu me mitwa la sato. If you have circles like many of us have, abamu mbela muli musanvu mbaya njenga yetuli. I understand the interest rate is five percent, around there or six. Chema ni interest rate zawe bisha bisha zibera ku. If you give them 10 million, you'll have a st on straight line, by the way, they'll give you, uh, I think, 12.5 after five years. So which one is a better investment? The middle one. So many of us go for land. It's not bad. You can diversify. But for faster, you know, when you want to accelerate your, your incomes fast, you go for the middle one. I think I started with 500,000. I fixed it and forgot, just forget about the money. All right? Now, we have other instruments which are given by insurance companies. Now this one I just found out like three months back. By virtue of my work, I prepared accounts of a very, one of the richest men in this country. He had his personal balance sheet. I looked at the figures. I called him. Young man. Where? How do you make all this money? You know, we suffer because of lack of information. So you are here to get information. My people suffer because of lack of work. Then he told me I invest in something called unit, unit trust. Said, what are those ones? The advantages of a unit trust are these. You can put any amount of money and it is compounded. Huh, don't know. Uh, you see, the, the circle gives interest on a straight line. The fixed deposit is on a straight line. This one is compounded. The interest and interest on interest on interest. Two, it is on a daily basis. Every day you can see the interest accruing on your account. A fixed deposit, you can't open it. The moment you fix it for a whole year or six months, you can't open it. But a unit trust, trust is open. You, you can put additional money and build it up. So each day that you put the money, they start from there and give you interest. I said, all my children must have these accounts. Amen? Amen. So these are things you can open for. You can put 200, you can put 100. The way money accumulates, you can never know. Hallelujah. Amen. One principle is that never keep idle money. One time I went to a home of one of the richest men in this country. He said, I trust you. He locked me in his house and said, you count my money there. Hey. I sweated with money. I was balancing. I gave, so I gave him his account. 
So I went for, when we were having tea, I said, well, how do you make all this money? And one of the principals, he told me, he has like four arcades in town. I never keep idle money. Amen? So whether it's earning one shilling, go for it. So your account should never have money which is idle there because people will borrow it and use it. Hallelujah. Number two is that there must be years of sacrifice where you say, let me suffer for these three, four years. Yes. There must be an incubation period. When a caterpillar wants to transform into a butterfly, it must go through a process of self-denial called metamorphosis. Hallelujah. So anyway, I just wanted to illustrate that there are options because you are wondering, where do I get? Because these instruments are risk almost free. Amen? The tax on these instruments is deducted straight away so you don't have to suffer with the taxes. So you don't have to chase, if those of you have rentals, you have to chase tenants. But this one, they just call you, your money size here. Amen. So uh, there are other instruments called the treasury bills. But those ones, you require some big money. All right, but you'll get there. After some time, this money grows and you'll get there. So land can be for long-term purposes to get money after some long time. Amen. Amina. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Then you can also do other financial instruments. You can do forex trading. There's a time I said I'll be buying dollars until I raise some amount of dollars which I can sell when they're up. Amen. So that is about income. Let's move on to expenditure. Because it is the net between income and expenditure which will make you grow. So we have looked at how you can enhance income. So let's look at expenditure. Regarding expenditure, it is being frugal. It is being, uh, they call it thriftiness. So expenditure thriftiness habits are as follows. Number one, that expenses are indispensable. You have to incur them. I saw the illustration here, give money here, then somebody said, oh my God. But, but where will you sleep? You can't sleep on a veranda. But the issue is spend, live within your means. So spend less than you earn. Now the illustration here was you spend, you spend, then you see you, at the end you have nothing. He began from there. Me, I want you to begin from the end. First remove the saving. First remove the tithe. Then go backwards. 
look for a house that will fit in what Kati you are living with. No, nya, a nyumba, go jeke chimache kumi, ten percent, go jeke zok teleka, a bitundu abidi, or siga zen samu, no nya nyumba emitual kumineta, no ye kujamu. But if you begin from there, you never you end up in negative. Mukua asa to galandi rodi, no di nyanga sefu board and alua te yoru kumi, or madiza to anana zachimucha kumi. Uh, pay cash and avoid debt as much as possible. Sasula sente we wala mabanja. Do not promise anticipated profits. Do subi zambu ha. Wanonja kufuna, wanonja kuria, nja kusasula. Give me this, I'm expecting, ah, 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 don't expect first, get it. Uvamu wine, riyajada wanoria, wanotoria, soko zifune, osasule. So don't anticipate profits before they are realized. Tobe era unoga manu, ngendo funa, kakade, nga tunda kafuna. Now, I read this book when I was in eighth grade. It's called Thriftiness. And it changed my life. Amen. Amen. Showing off. You see, these things, you put on a shirt, you are competing. There's no price tag that you bought it at this. Nobody knows. Amen. The food you eat, nobody, it's the same stomach, it is inside. Whether it is 20,000, whether it is 50, we are, all, we are all satisfied. As long as we reach the workplace, whether you've come by a bike, whether you've come by a motorcycle or a Prado, we are all at work. Hallelujah. Amen. Then another one is invest in knowledge or learning. Now listen to this one. Much each expenditure with income. Much each expenditure with income. Am I there? What am I saying? If you spend daily, you must get an income that brings daily. If you have an expenditure that is weekly, get income that is weekly. So much in terms of timing and amount with the revenue. So the reason we are messed up is because we have, we earn monthly, we spend daily. We spend daily. So that one creates a lot of uh, problems. Okay. Uh, next. By the way, I have not started. I'm taking you through what others have, just to clear a number of things. The next one is about analyzing business, uh, business analysis. Yeah. I've, uh, many people have come to me. I want to buy a Boda Boda Muzei. I think I gave you some example when I was preaching. And I can't give you money until you give me a cost-benefit analysis. Many times people have chased themselves away. I thought there was money in this business. So, always consider what people forget, depreciation of the item. Because the motorcycle or taxi is reducing in value. Yes, by the way, even that one. The moment it gets out, it's already lost value. But for you, you are just counting daily income, daily income, forgetting. So when you are costing, please include the depreciation. Number two, cost your time, you, the manager. I have friends who have farms in Mbarara. They drive up to Mbarara. 
They come back. They have 30 cows. In me, I say, how do you survive? Every weekend he drives. How much fuel is that? Then bring back bananas of 20,000. Anyway, the truth is, cost your time because even you, the manager, you cost something. Time is money. Include taxes. Even if you are not paying them, please include them in the costing. So that if you don't pay them, you know I have saved something at the back of your mind. Then cost all travel costs, I've said that. Include rent, even when you are not paying house rent. Because surely the business may not be profitable if you were renting. Then lastly, attach all costs that and identified risks like police, accidents, riots, bad debts, and fraud. Because Let's look at the last question on the next slide quickly. Uh, if I have a boda boda, I hear it costs around uh, 4.5 million. So, uh, revenue, how much does it bring? I don't know. I... Okay, I got it right. So, 10,000 times six days, I hear the seventh days for the driver. So, you get 60,000. You service the 10,000. Then there is depreciation. Now, depreciation, if we are to sell that thing after two years, that will make uh, the difference between 5 million and how much you will sell it after two years is three million. So what we call wear and tear is the two million divided by the 24 months over the two years. So every month that would be how much? 21,000, I think. Uh, then uh, there are other risks which I told you, police, uh, riots. Cost it and put something. This is just for illustration purposes. Then consumables, uh, you'll have to pay tires and things like that. Put them at... Uh, so, 10%. supposing you get 15,800 now per week, yes. So, that's the dent income. Multiply it by the 24 uh, months and see whether you are making money. Why am I bringing this one? Some of the businesses don't have any money, by the way. So you may be rotating, doing, but getting nothing. People think you are making money. Actually, they even come and say, uh, please give us some money, because they see you working and working. But so after two years, you are back in the same spot. Because it can even be knocked off the road completely. Those are business risks. So when you are analyzing a business, please be as extensive and analytical like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that was just to go through what we have been having so that we are enlightened a bit. Praise God. So in the remaining minutes, 
I told you that God gives us the power to make wealth. So, and I told you that God has given me peace that equates to power. On Sunday, I shared the power of wisdom. I also talked about the power of, uh, what was the other one? Of um, preparation. Then paying a price. So today, I want to give you two more. If time allows three, I'll just summarize the third one. So the third one uh, is people. That if you, God will give you the power to make wealth. If you know how to relate with people. You know, at school I observed. I was a very poor man. And I had other fellow eh, people. I was poor, but there were people who were poor. But I saw my fellow poor people would never go hungry because they know how they knew how to speak. You cannot eat when the man is around. He will, the way he talks. Eh? You can't even tease him who will always jump out of the problem. So I discovered that you can use this positively. Amen? Amina. People power. Hey. <laughs> I'm not in politics now. Okay, power of the people. Amen. Amen. Churches are regarded big because of the number of people they have. Political parties win because they have more people. Amen. Amina. People Abantu. make consumers. Abantu. They are the customers we are fighting for. They are our employees. They are the believers. Now, the mission of this church is to influence society. Those are the people. If you don't know how to manage people, if you don't know how to manage conflicts, no matter how much money you have, by the way, it can collapse because you don't know how to relate with people. Your family can get spoiled because you don't know how to manage people. Our business partners are people. Listen to me. God loves people. No matter how much money you have, if you don't have friends, if you don't know how to relate with people, you will die a poor man. Amen? Amen. God said the second commandment, love your neighbor. So the money we are making is to influence. By the way, influence is about getting leadership. People, followers, followers, yes. Amen. Amina. So we are a leadership. We are training leaders. And a leader influences people. So one of the powers of, of, um, of making wealth is learning people skills. Amen. Amen. The people are the ones who own wealth. First of all, I tell my uh, boys at home that they are climbing plants and then the others are what? Eh? Those strong trees. 
Waduwe miteji be jamani. Ne wabira wo ebiba le ebikula ngabi. Weak as you are, you have to be next to a strong person if you are to go up. Amen. Amen. You can't just jump from anywhere and you are there. You have to be close to a strong man. Now look at these climbing plants. They look for a strong tree. Then they climb. Then they climb. When they reach on top, they cover. They are taller than even the strong tree. You must get somebody who is higher than you. It is power if you can relate with somebody who is more intelligent, who is who can be your mentor, somebody who can inspire you to a higher level. Amen. Amina. So you must have the power. First of all, now there are two types. You yourself as a person. Oh, you know, you have to work on your discipline, your character. In terms of behavior. In terms of speech, how do you speak? Learning how to talk before, listening before you talk. Those are skills. There are some people you are talking to him, he's already quarreling. He's, you know? Humility. Jesus overcame. Jesus uh, won because the Bible says that because he humbled himself. He was made, uh, what does it mean? God elevated him God elevated him above. I was a friend of uh, one of the great boys in this country. I won't say his name, but he was, he was uh, leading NSSF. So I talked to him. How did you make it there? Listen to what he told me. As long as you have what I need. Even if you tell me to lick your shoes. I lick them. Don't take the literal meaning to lick shoes. But it is about humility to get what you want. Amen. So that is about yourself. Now, the skills of knowing uh, people. Now, again, people have information. We need information. I told you about our land which was being stolen. This land was actually gone. It almost went. But because of it, I knew the power of knowing people. You know, if you know people, your life can be so easy. True. So I got a commissioner from lands. Uh, I got her, I, we went with him to Wachiso. The man did not work the whole day. He dedicated a whole day to me. Because everybody knew him. Wherever he opened, he would not even knock. The man would just enter. He's in the laptop. Where is this file? Where is this file? The file which had been hidden was disk was brought within 10 minutes. And the registrar said to me, you are lucky. This land was gone. The fraudster had done everything to take the land. And the man did not leave Wachiso until everything was rectified. Now people thought I'd, one person had asked me for 10 million to reverse the transaction. But because I know somebody, I just paid him fuel. You can lose what you have because you don't know people. You must, we are Christians, therefore we must relate with others. Now I have an exercise. People, okay, power of the people. <laughs> 
means that you should have contacts in every place. These are simple, simple facts. I want you to list for me who you know in police. The name and the telephone number. If you have something, you just say, ah, uh, ha. If you don't have, go and look for one. In, in the army. Do you know anybody? I know God knows you. But you must also know people. <laughs> in justice. In parliament. Some of us don't even know our MPs. How will you influence those people if you are distancing yourself from them? In health. By the way, this church falls under what ministry? Churches fall under which ministry? Can I, I won't embarrass you. Some of us may even not know the minister who is in charge. Eh? Some of us may not know the minister who is in charge. Who is the minister? Father Okay, but you see, okay, let's go ahead. Uh, education. We have schools. Musumbore has some problems. Just says, do you know anybody? You see the power of knowing somebody. Take it down, go it's one. not because you want to bribe. But you want, want life to be easier, faster. Oblamo State house. Museta so How about the district? Could this took it here, Kampala ni akumani. Now, do you know your ROC one? Yete amani wa mumulondo amumani yabo mani yavako. How many of you know your ROC one? And you have his number. Defense. Defense. At night, somebody is attacking. Hello? Defense. But you have understood the point. You must know people. Power of the people. Okay. Uh, the third P, P <laughs> is about proficiency. Power of excellence, of uh, perfection. That whatever we do as Christians. You see, I have employed people. I have done work. I have traveled like in eight countries in this world. Because of what we have we, we are doing. But skill gives you the power to wealth. The Bible says, have you seen a skilled man? He will stand before Hallelujah. Amina. So the power of perfection the power of proficiency. The pastor loves Daniel, I don't know which scripture. Daniel 1, is it 6? Six, 6 something. Hmm? About Daniel. That Daniel distinguished himself. And he had a spirit of excellence. Yeah. Daniel distinguished himself above all the other officials and satraps. Because of an excellent spirit. And the king planned to set him above all the kingdom. I talked of us being towers in our industries, wherever we are. You can only be a tower if you excel in whatever you do. Now, distinction comes from the distinguished means you have distinctions. If you have done exams, people who get distinctions are those who get one and two, I think. 
So we are supposed to be getting in those, to be in those levels. If, if it is a church service, it should be distinguished. If it is worship, don't just worship. It should be extinguished. Worship. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are doing work anywhere, you must be distinguished. You must be above average. Then what will happen? You will command your price. The people I train, I tell them, reach a level when you are not looking for work. Work is looking for. Amen? Amen. You see, we do recruitment. But there are times you cannot, fail, you cannot get the expertise the organization wants. However much you advertise, you are wasting time. Nobody will apply. They are comfortable where they are. So do you know what we do? We identify them. Do we call it hide hunting? So you go and negotiate, sir. You are getting 15 million? Can we give you 20, sir? <laughs> when you are they're just begging because of your excellence. Now it's not about only employment. If you're a mechanic and people know you bring balance, when you say I've repaired, uh, you see they have vehicles that, huh, that Become, come back from the garage when they are worse than the way they went. So are you that mechanic who, when you are given, entrusted with a vehicle, somebody will know, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. My time is up. The Bible says that whatever you do, do your best. As Christians, let's not be, uh, let's be unreserved about what we do. I don't know how I can overemphasize that. Yes, be, yes, you, people should know uh, I think it was Pastor Moses who said, yeah, when they see what you are doing, they say, what is the question? What is the question? What's the answer? Something like that. See, I when we are looking for people to take over. You see, Daniel, the king said he wanted to exalt him above everybody in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Uh, we got a very big job, I think, two, three years ago. Now, you'll give me at least some six minutes. Um, our farm, we have international farms in this country. Ours is local. <laughs> so, we, it's a long story, but... We bid for work and we won a very big contract. I saw members of parliament going on the floor, arguing and defending our farm that we are able to do the work. And you see, I... The mem I don't know those members of parliament. I think they said, well, how did they know about us? What you do in secret, people will know. So, look at quality. We have lost, by the way, we have lost so many jobs simply because of our stand on particular issues. Okay, the last P. Which I think we may miss many times. Go to the last slide. 
is uh, physical health. No matter how much money you make, don't forget about your physical health. Hallelujah. Because what will it profit you to die? Yes, he has finished. Very good boy, very good man. Eh? Sorry to call you boy, Musumba. All right, so I have, uh, there is an acronym called New Start. Uh, it is, yeah. Nutrition, exercising, taking enough water, having enough sunshine, temperance, having fresh air, resting. Amen. So, those are, because of time, I will not expand on those ones. But please exercise. Talk. I've seen people just breaking and dying of heart attack. Hallelujah. Amina. Because 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 says, it says, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you. That you may be in good health as your soul prospers. So the Bible wants you to be healthy as well. Hey, eat vegetables. Don't stop eating meat. Wonderful. So why don't I end here? Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. Thank you for using me, Lord. And thank you for your people whom you have brought. I pray that, Lord, we may not be the same. We shall be a healthy church. Financially, in wisdom, spiritually, and all other aspects of life. Because you want us to have balanced deity. Bless your people. In Jesus' name I pray.